Hey guys, welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology, and today you guys are finally going to get to see what is in this package I have in front of me. It's nothing super exciting, but it is something I needed for an upcoming experiment, so I went ahead and ordered it off Amazon. This was 11 bucks off Amazon, and of course you guys already know what this is because you can read the title. This is a SATA card with an IDE port on it. it has two SATA ports, one IDE port, and we're going to see if this thing actually works and if it's any good. So, I'm going to go ahead and open it because I know you guys are anxious to actually check this out. I'm going to bring the camera up and put the mic above it so you can get, uh, you know, the full unboxing experience as usual. Now, a lot of you guys have probably noticed that this is not Amazon packaging, and that's because I did not order this directly through Amazon. I ordered it from a seller on Amazon. Uh, the seller was called Free Shipping to 48 States, I believe. Um, and it was a little bit cheaper to go through that seller than Amazon. Going directly through Amazon would have cost me like 13 bucks. Going through this seller only cost me 11 bucks for the card. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up now. And I probably will tease you guys on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. And by the way, if you haven't liked the Facebook page, you should. That's how you get all the latest AA computers and technology updates. Hopefully that's still in the camera frame. I'm not behind the camera like I usually am. I'm sitting uh, right in front of it. There we go. And the brand is called, I believe, it's it's spelled S-Y-B-A. I think it's pronounced Siba or something like that. There you go. There's the box. It's kind of ugly, to be honest. It's like green, blue, and red. Not a super attractive box. Let me uh, get behind the camera so I can uh, get a better view of this. There we go, now you guys have a bird's eye view of the packaging. Before I go any further, there is one thing I wanna to touch on. The product page on Amazon for this card is a little bit misleading and I knew what I was gonna get, but I just wanna warn you guys if you decide to buy this card, they say, the SATA ports on this are capable of SATA 2 speeds, that's three gigabits per second, but the PCI interface is not. So that's impossible. This is gonna hover around SATA 1 speeds at 1.5 gigabits per second. Um, so that's also false as well. Uh, I think that's about it as far as the misleading information on the product page goes. Let's go ahead and take the plastic wrapping off this. I just wanted to give you guys uh, a little heads up with that. There we go, and we'll look around the box. Serial ATA, yes, on the box it's correct, but on the website it's not. See, it says 1.5 gigabits per second, so that's sat at one speed, it's not sat at two speed. So the box is correct, the product page on Amazon is not. I'm just gonna flip through here, I don't think I need to read through all this. Uh, if you guys wanna check it out, of course, this is in 1080p, just flip the resolution up and have a look yourself. And as I said before, I think the box is pretty ugly. <laughs> All right, that's enough. I don't think we need to stay on the box too long. It starts to get boring after a while, so let's open it up. And there we go. It's inside a anti-static baggie. Let me change the focus. You guys can actually see this. And I'm just going to open it up. Whew, that tape is kind of annoying. There we go. Ta-da! There is the SATA card. You see the two SATA 1 ports right here, or uh, IDE slash PATA port right here. Uh, there's the PCI interface, and then there's our large bracket. I thought it came with a uh, low form factor bracket, but it looks like it does not. Uh, there's a uh, driver utility CD. I don't think we're going to need to use this, but it does come with one. Um, and it looks like we get a little user manual but I doubt it's going to be too helpful. So I'm gonna to toss both of these off to the side and give you guys a closer look at the SATA card. The Via VT6421A on this thing is capable of RAID 1.0 and JBOD. I did not realize this earlier on in the video and I said a couple times that it did not support hardware RAID and I was wrong, so I cut all of those times out. It does support hardware RAID. It has a nice little menu uh, that you can open up right when your system boots up and you can configure all that stuff. I will show you how to do this in just a couple minutes when I actually start playing around with the card, but yes, this card is capable of creating RAID arrays. Now on top of that, this is also an easy and cheap way to add SATA ports to a computer that does not support SATA or add a legacy port to a newer computer. Maybe you want to use an old IDE slash PADA drive or hard drive. This will also do that as well. 
As far as installation goes, the procedure is going to be the same as any other standard PCI card. You can see my PCI slot all the way down there in the depths of my computer. It's really close to my video card. I think it should fit though. So we're going to bring the PCI SATA card down right here. I'm going to place it on top of that PCI slot and I'm going to just push it down. There we go, snapped into place. And of course you should secure it with a screw, but I'm not going to because this is a short term test. And of course, also you wouldn't want to run it in a uh, configuration like this, because as you can see, it is cutting off quite a bit of airflow from my video card. So long term, uh, this is a pretty poor configuration, but once again, this is just for testing purposes. I stopped filming for a couple hours just to play around with the card and the card's been working pretty well so far. I did have some issues at the beginning and that's because I just had to let Windows detect the card at first. So I had to uh, plug my primary drive with the operating system on it back into the motherboard, boot it up, allow Windows to detect the card, then I could turn it off, plug the operating system drive into the card itself and then boot from the card. So you can boot from the card, I tested it out, it works okay. Not really having any problems with it yet. This is the software read uh, configuration utility right here. This is uh, actually on a chip on the card. And I just want to show you around here for a couple minutes. So I'm going to bring the camera up. And by a few minutes, I'm going to try to spend under a minute going over this because it might start to get boring. But as you see, I have thrown a SATA drive just in the mix right here. And then above that is an ID drive all the way to the top because unfortunately I ran out of SATA cables and that's kind of a bummer, but it also gives us the opportunity to test out the PADA port on this. And yes, you can use a PADA drive and a SATA drive uh, in a RAID configuration with this software RAID card. Yes, the PADA port does work. Uh, I tested it, works just fine. So we're gonna move over here. So this is the setup utility. It's actually on the card itself. When you're booting, it does give you a prompt. It tells you to hit Control Z, and once you hit Control Z, it brings you here. So I set up a couple RAID arrays using this tool just to play around with it, and then I deleted them so I could demo uh, it again, or the process again. And now I'm just gonna create another array. So first thing we need to do is hit create array. There we go. I'm not gonna hit auto setup because I want to walk you guys through the process. Array mode, so we can choose from three raid modes with this uh, card. You could go with raid zero, raid one, or array JBOD. Gonna back out of that. I just wanna stick with raid zero. Uh, select disk drives. Now we're gonna select the two drives to stripe. All right, looks good. This is the IDE drive right here and that is the SATA drive right there. Uh, strike size, I'm just gonna leave it at 64K and we're gonna start the create process. Yes, and I'm gonna hit Y. There we go. So once we back up to this, we can just exit out the utility. Bye, yes, get me out of here. And we'll boot into Windows and as you will see, Windows will detect that array. After doing some research, there's still one thing that I'm kind of confused about. To the top right of the screen, it says all RAID operations only co-work with VIA VRAID software inside OS. Well, I had no need to install said VIA VRAID software, it just all worked after I set it up in that configuration utility. Um, so I'm not sure why it says that, maybe I'm doing something wrong, maybe I'm just crazy. Uh, I looked up that chipset online, the uh, VIA... Uh, VT6421A, and according to this, it is a RAID controller um, as well. So I'm kind of confused. If you guys could, if you guys know anything about that, I would love to hear about it. I'm not really sure. I don't think you need to install the software on your computer. There we go, that is the array we just created using the card, and unfortunately I don't have two 300 gigabyte drives laying around, so we just make a flat out 600 gigabyte array. Um, but I mean, I guess it works for demonstration purposes. So I'm just gonna create a new volume, we're gonna throw something on it, and maybe we'll benchmark it to see uh, how that works. All right, so I must have forgotten to give the drive a drive letter at first, and I wasn't sure why it wasn't showing up, and I went back into disk management and saw that it was just labeled this new volume, so I'm not sure why I forgot to do that. I'm gonna transfer a file over from my Western Digital Black storage drive into the RAID array just to see what happens. So I'm gonna throw this one over here. There we go, and the video is playing off the array just fine. Let's grab Crystal Disk Mark and just benchmark this real quick. I knew the array wasn't going to be very fast, I just benchmarked it for fun, and there's the results. We're using some pretty slow drives, but under here, I benchmarked the solid state drive in my system, and these speeds will definitely saturate a SATA 1 interface. So let's actually plug in the solid state drive to the card and see what kind of speeds we can get using the card. So this is with my buffer board through a SATA 2 port, and we're going to plug it into the card to see if it is indeed actually SATA 1. 
So here are all of the speeds with the drive hooked up to the SATA card. They are definitely lower than SATA 2, so we are definitely using SATA Revision 1, and even for SATA 1, uh, they're sitting a tad bit low, so yeah, on the slower side, but it does get the job done. So I'm going to try one more thing, and that's to see if we can use both the SATA ports along with the IDE port at the same time. With two SATA drives and the IDE drive plugged in at the same time, it is detecting all three discs. So yes, you can use all ports at once. You know guys, just testing this card out using one platform on Windows is not good enough for me and I don't think it should be good enough for you guys either. So I went ahead and brought out this old Pentium 4 machine. This is a Gateway 832 GM and you can see the uh, RAID card is installed in the system. In conjunction with that, I am using a live installation of Lubuntu 14.04. I went ahead and set up a Stripe array using the uh, card interface. And I'm using the same drives, it's the Mac Store drive and that 80 gigabyte Seagate drive. I subbed the Stripe array, uh, worked just fine. And I'm on Lubuntu and it is detecting said RAID array. Right there we have that same RAID array that we used with the Windows installation, 150 gigabytes. And you can see that the uh, operating system is detecting the card as well. So I didn't have to install any other software, everything's working great. So with that, we can conclude that one, the card works with Linux, and two, we didn't have to install any software to actually get that RAID array up. It just worked off the bat. So this is just another one of those things that's cheap and gets the job done, which was exactly what I was looking for. Now I'm still kind of confused regarding the software thing. I don't think you need to install that. I didn't install it and it worked just fine. Um, so yeah, if I could get input from you guys on that, that would be great. I would live, I would really love to hear about it because once again, sort of confused. The website said one thing, the card said another thing, the direction said one thing, the interface said another thing. So yeah. Kind of confused right now, so I need your input. Thanks for watching, guys. That's going to be about it for this installment of A Computers and Technology. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post a comment in the comment section, especially if it's regarding this card. Uh, don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to support us, you can use my Amazon affiliate link. Link will be in the description.